Hello friends, I am Dr. Raman Mittal. I work at the Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. I am going to discuss with you the economic and moral rights which are available as part of the copyright law. Before we go to the nitty gritty of economic and moral rights, let us discuss the general nature of these rights. First, copyright is a bundle of rights. That means there are various rights that are available within the system of copyright. Second, these rights are negative in nature. Negative rights means that the guarantee of law is to the author or the owner is not that the author or owner can exploit the rights himself. The guarantee of law by granting copyright to the author or owner is that he can restrain others from exploiting the work over which he has copyright. That means there is no positive guarantee of law for exploitation of copyright with the owner. For example, if A writes a book which is considered to be blasphemous and goes against the interests of the society, just because he has copyright over the book, because he has created the book, doesn't mean that the law gives him guarantee to exploit the work. Yes, he can always refrain others and restrain others from exploiting his work. Third, the rights which are granted within copyright, they are of exclusive nature. Exclusive rights simply means that law would exclude all others from exploitation of the rights which are granted to one person. The fourth feature of the general feature of these rights is that these rights are transferable in nature. That means these rights, especially the economic rights, barring aside the moral rights, they are transferable. They can pass from one person to another either through contracts or by operation of law. The last aspect, general aspect of these rights is that these rights are fragmentable. That means you can break these rights into different parts and exploit them individually. Let us now see the general framework of rights within the bundle of copyright. Now broadly copyright can be divided into two kinds of rights, economic rights and moral rights. Economic rights are available always to the owner, moral rights are always available to the author. That's the difference between these two rights, the basic difference. Now, Economic rights are also of various kinds, reproduction, distribution, performance in public, communication to the public, adaptation and translation. All these rights are available to the owner of copyright in a work. Now we shall go into a little detail about all these rights. First is the right of reproduction. This right of reproduction is the most fundamental right that emanates from copyright. Right of reproduction basically means the right to make copies. So the name copyright comes from this right. The right to copy means the law grants only the owner exclusively to make copies of his work. Nobody else in the world has the right to make copies of the work that belongs to somebody else. Now all these rights that we have seen, they all belong to the owner. Now, these rights, as we have seen, right of dis reproduction, distribution, performance in public, communication to the public, adaptation and translation, they are available depending upon the category of work. So that means that the rights could vary depending upon which category we are talking about. For example, rights in case of a book would vary from the rights in case of a computer software and they would also vary in case of a cinematograph film. So right of reproduction is such right which is available in case of all the works. All the works means literary, dramatic, musical, artistic works and cinematograph films and sound recordings. Now the examples of right of reproduction are photocopying of a book, copying a computer software program, using a cartoon character on a t-shirt incorporating a portion of another's tune into your new song. So all these are instances of 
right of reproduction. So, if anybody else does any of these things, then he can be held guilty of violation of the copyright or infringement of copyright of the owner. Now, there is a concept of substantial and material copying that means, in order to be held responsible or for infringement of violation of somebody's copyright, it is not necessary that the entire work should have been reproduced. As long as there is a reproduction of substantial or and material part of the whole work, the person who has done so can be held responsible for having infringed the copyright of the owner. Now, could the storage of a of some work in the memory of the computer be the same as reproduction? Yes, this has been specifically provided in section 14 of the Copyright Act of 1957 that the storage by any means including the storage in a computer medium is also reproduction of the work. The second important right within the system of economic rights of copyright is the right of distribution. As was the case with the right of reproduction, right of distribution is also available in case of all the works. Now, how can distribution take place in case of a work? How can its distribution take place? It could take place through sale, through rental, through free lending or through free distribution which is similar to a gift. Through all these ways, a work could be reproduced. Now, once we have said that this right is available in case of all the works, but it does not mean that it is available in case of all the works in a similar manner. The availability of this right differs from work to work. Now, it is available in a limited form in case of literary, musical and artistic works. How it is limited in, in case of these works? First, it is subject to the doctrine of first sale or the doctrine of exhaustion. What does it mean? The exact language that is used in the statute in law is of that enumerates this right is that issuing copies of the work to the public not being copies already in circulation. So, the exact nomenclature is issuing copies of the work to the public not being copies already in circulation. That means, the right to issue copies of work to the public that is available with the owner of copyright in literary, musical and artistic works, but this is circumscribed, this is limited by the doctrine of first sale because this does not apply to the copies which are already in circulation. That means, if the copy of a book has been sold already by the owner or his authorized agent, then the buyer of the book can do whatever, can exercise all the rights, can exercise this right of distribution vis-a-vis uh, -vis that book. For example, if I go to the market and buy a new book, am I free to sell it as second hand version? Yes, because this right is limited. The right of distribution was limited by the doctrine of first sale. That means, the owner of copyright in the book had the right to sell it once and once it was sold, it was already circulated in the market, then the buyer of the book is free, is absolutely free to resell it in the open market. That is the nature of first sale doctrine. Second limitation in case of literary, musical and artistic works vis-a-vis -vis the right of distribution is that the rental rights are not available. That means, if I go to the market and buy 1000 books, can I start a library of those books where I invite public and charge some fee for the use of my library or for issuance of the books? Yes, the law permits me to do that because there is no rental right that is granted to the owner of copyright in case of literary, dramatic, uh, musical and artistic works. Now, this right is available in a higher form in case of computer programs, films and sound recordings. How it is available in, in the higher form is that there is no exhaustion principle that is applicable in case of computer programs, films and sound recording. Meaning thereby, if I go to the market and buy a CD containing a software, a computer program, I use it for my purpose, I no longer use it, can I sell it in the open market as second hand CD? No, the law does not allow that because this right of distribution as is available to computer programs is not limited by the doctrine of first sale at all. Second, the rental rights are also available to the owners of copyright in computer programs, films and sound recordings. 
that means if I buy two dozen computer programs from the market can I start a library of those computer programs? No. If I buy 500 CDs containing different films from the open market my, my purchase is absolutely legal as far as my own use or enjoyment of those films is concerned but I cannot start a video library with those CDs because the law doesn't give me give, law, law doesn't give me that right because this rental right is made exclusively available to the owner of copyright in the film or sound recording or computer program. 